Good afternoon. My name is Jeffrey Reed, and welcome back to another lecture from the Honors Chemistry 2020 Lecture Series. Today, I will be presenting on sensing chemicals underwater and how it affects our environment. This presentation is based off the CNN article titled, Underwater Chemical Device Measures Reactive Superoxides Near Corals. This will be an outline of our presentation today. We will be starting with a summary of the CNN article before moving on to topics such as what causes coral bleaching, what are the effects of coral bleaching on the environment around it, how can we stop coral bleaching, how are superoxides formed underwater, and what are superoxides. First things first, let's get started with our CNN article. As stated in our intro, the article we will be going over today is called Underwater Device Measures Reactive Superoxides Near Corals. The article begins by explaining the difficulties in measuring different chemical species. The chemical species they are mentioning specifically are the reactive chemical species of oxygen. In this article, they go more in depth as they talk about the chemical O2, also known as superoxides, which is produced around corals. We will also be going more in depth on superoxide later on in this presentation. The article continues talking about how when corals are stressed, they produce an excess of superoxide in their cells, which in turn banishes the algae they depend on, leading up to the bleaching of the coral. They continue by elaborating on the confusion surrounding coral bleaching. Due to the difficulties of achieving precise measurements of superoxides in our corals, scientists are still unsure whether or not they are linked as the link is rather tenuous. The article continues as they begin talking about the new device that Colleen Hansel of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute helped make. The device is the size of a small suitcase and made of things like pumps, flow cells, and photomultiplier tubes. The device is able to be brought down to the deeper parts of the coral reefs, unlike the one they used before, which is located on a boat above the coral reefs. This device only needs one diver to operate, making the trips much more efficient and easier to complete. The device uses a chemiluminescent probe, a luciferin analog from a marine organism, to detect the superoxides. The team conducted many tests in order to calibrate the new device before sending it out onto the field for the first time. They tested off the coast of Woods Hole, Massachusetts, and later on in the coral reefs of Cuba. This, with this new device, they learned that different corals emit different amounts of superoxides. This means that they are regulating the production of superoxides and the production is species specific. Finally, the article ends saying, understanding superoxide chemistry may ultimately improve management strategies for corals, which are severely threatened by climate change and disease. For the next slide, we'll be going to what causes coral bleaching. Coral bleaching is another one of the many negative effects caused by climate change. Corals are very sensitive and even just a two degree change in temperature can cause the bleaching of a coral reef. Some other causes of this bleaching include a change in light or nutrients. When a coral bleaches, they are expelling a symbiotic algae called zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae are the coral's food source and are the cause of their bright colors. When stressed, corals will begin expelling the algae and begin to dull in color. Finally, without the algae, the coral will look completely white, lose its food source, and become susceptible to disease. All of this is caused by problems associated with climate change. Some things that can affect coral include a change in ocean temperature, runoff, pollution, overexposure to light, and extreme low tides. Climate change is the leading factor in coral bleaching. Coral reefs support a great variety of marine life. We all know of the Nemo's and Dorries, but there is a whole diverse ecosystem that coral reefs help to support. The bleaching of these reefs can cause the deaths of these beloved ecosystems and their beautiful environments. The reefs not only support fish, but also sea turtles, seabirds, crabs, jellyfish, shrimp, starfish, and even more. The coral reefs give these animals shelter and an area where they can give birth. The coral reefs are an essential part in the lives of many of our beloved sea animals. Not only does coral bleaching affect marine life, but also life up here on the surface too. Humans are heavily affected by the bleaching of coral in some surprising waves. Coral reefs act as a natural barrier for waves that may cause damage to the communities along the coast. Without coral reefs, those seaside communities may have to rely on things like seawalls to help protect them. Not only are seawalls expensive, not as effective, and environmentally damaging, but they are also not as pleasing to the eyes of coral reef. The coral reefs also help supply jobs and food to the people who live near them. Without the reefs, fishermen wouldn't have as many fish to catch and sell, and the billion dollar industry of tourism would also be jeopardized. The loss of these coral reefs is devastating to coastal communities, as they lose thousands of jobs alongside the loss of these coral reefs. Some medicines are even made from the coral that comes from these reefs, and without those, people may be un unable to get things like heart medicine or cancer treatment. Overall, the loss of coral reefs could cost humans nearly $84 billion in losses to tourism, fishing, and biodiversity. But not all hope is lost just yet. There's many ways regular people like you and I can help to contribute to the stopping and healing of coral bleaching. For one, you can help by reducing your carbon footprint and by recycling more. People can help by avoiding the use of herbicides and pesticides that may find their way into the ocean. You can also help stop fertilizer or stormwater runoff from entering our oceans and diluting the salt water. Now we begin on those aforementioned superoxides. The superoxides are a byproduct of breathing. Anything that breathes oxygen makes superoxides and quickly expels them. 
The superoxides are very toxic, so when created, they must be expelled immediately. They are also ubiquitous, which means that they are found almost everywhere. In order to create energy, cells will take electrons from things like fat or carbohydrates and then transfer those same electrons into oxygen. Finally, once the oxygen molecule has grabbed four electrons, it pairs up with hydrogen to form water. However, when stressed, this process becomes sloppy, and some changes may happen due to that sloppiness. During these stress times, oxygen may take only one electron. This causes the creation of superoxides. The superoxide is very reactive and highly unstable. The superoxide will do anything to gain or lose its extra electron, so it will give or take from nearby cells, causing a destructive chain reaction. These superoxides have been linked to damages in humans, and many marine biologists think that it may also be linked to the coral bleaching phenomenon in coral around the world. The superoxides are linked to things like cancer or premature aging in humans. Superoxide is an anionic form of O2. The superoxide is as important as the product of the one electron reduction of dioxygen, which is a common occurrence in nature. The superoxide is a free radical. The chemical is also paramagnetic. This means that it's very lightly attracted to the poles of a magnet, but it doesn't retain any magnetism. The superoxide is also extremely toxic due to the fact that it can inactivate iron sulfur clusters which contain enzymes. The enzymes are critical in a wide variety of met metabolic pathways. This causes the liberation of iron, which can then undergo the process of Fenton chemistry, which can generate another very reactive chemical, hydroxyl. Superoxide can also initiate lipid peroxidization of polyunsaturated fatty acids in its HO2 form. It can also react with both carbonyl compounds and halogenated car carbons to create toxic peroxy radicals. This means that superoxide is the leading factor in the creation of oxidative stress. These are highly reactive compounds that are produced when oxygen is reduced by a single electron. In biological systems, superoxides can be produced during the normal catalytic functions of some enzymes and during the process of oxidization of hemoglobin to methemoglobin. Due to the toxicity of superoxide, nearly all organisms contain isoforms of the superoxide scavenging enzyme. Superoxide dismutase, or SOD. SOD will catalyze the neutralization of superoxide almost as fast as the two can diffuse together spontaneously when in a solution. This means that this enzyme is very efficient. Genetic knockout of SOD creates del deleterious phen phenotypes in organisms ranging from bacteria to mice. Mice will die at 21 days after birth if the mitochondrial version of SOD, also known as MNSOD, is inactivated. This will cause the mouse to suffer from multiple health issues like reduced lifespan, liver, cancer, muscle atrophy, cataracts, and female infertility when the cletoplasmic variant is inactivated. The cletoplasmic variant, variant is also known as CUZNSOD. With only one electron, the superoxide is paramagnetic and a free radical. In living organisms, the superoxide Side dismutase SOD protects cells from the damaging effects of the super toxic superoxide. In summary, coral bleaching has a harmful effect on both humans and marine life. The detection of superoxides and other chemicals underwater can help humans understand what they can do to stop coral bleaching. Superoxides are a toxic chemical found nearly everywhere that are thought to be the cause of coral bleaching. Thank you for watching my presentation, and thank you for participating in the Honors Chemistry 2020 lecture series. Be as shown now are my works cited. If you want to look at them, you can pause the video.